So what should you do before you purchase a car on Craigslist? Or really any classified platform for that matter. Offer up, Facebook Marketplace, what have you. Look, when you buy a car from a dealer, the dealer is going to be responsible for getting you title transferred to your name. When you buy a car from a private seller, some of that responsibility falls to you. Don't forget to leave comments below with questions about this subject or experiences you've had so we can um, respond to those and comment on them. So you buy a car on Craigslist. Somebody's got you know, a classic car, maybe a family car, second car that you want to buy from a private party. Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure they have a title. You know, it's an urban legend that you can just buy a car with a bill of sale and get away with it. Yeah, there are some loopholes you can use to get a title with only a bill of sale, but they don't always work, and they're way more expensive than actually having a title. It puts you at risk until you get that legal title printed from the government with your name on it. You're at risk of losing all your money, no matter how cheap it is or how much of a deal it is. Unless that person hands you a valid legal title document, when you give them the money, you're 100% vulnerable to losing your money. So first of all, make sure they have the title. Look at it. Touch it with your own two hands before you give money. Second thing is, you want to make sure the title is in the name of the person you're buying it from. You don't want to buy a car from somebody in the titles in somebody else's name because you don't know if it's a legitimate transfer. You don't know if that other person actually wants to sell that car. Technically, the person whose name is printed on the front of the title is supposed to sign that back of the title and write your name as the buyer at the same time. Sometimes people will do what's called curb stoning or jump titles or skip titles where they buy cars from people, leave the title blank on the back, put it back on Craigslist and then resell it for a higher price and then just write your name in as the buyer. Technically, that's illegal. Almost every state has a law that says you can't do that. So make sure the title is in the name of the person you're buying it from. Make them show me your ID, their ID, and show the title. It's the same name on it. That's number two. Now, of course, all of this presumes that you checked out the car and the car is any good. We're not talking about if the transmission's dead or had bad brakes. We're talking about title. Next thing you want to do is make sure that there's no defects on the title. By defects, I mean physical defects on the actual certificate, but also historical defects. So if the title has any defects on it, like white out, a rip, a tear, a stain, missing pieces, somebody spilled coffee on it, that title is now void. Even though you might say, well, here's the title, it's pretty good. You can't bring that title to the DMV and have them accept it. They will only accept the title if it's in pristine condition. If it's ripped and taped together, sorry. If somebody wrote something on it and whited it out, void. If somebody spilled coffee on it, and even if it's readable but just stained, the DMV will not accept it. So make sure the title's good physically. Now, what about historical defects? What that means is, are there any liens on the vehicle? Most liens will show up on the title, but some of them you have to check directly with lien sources. Another defect is what we've all heard of, salvage title. Salvage can mean a lot of different things. It means that an insurance company in the past paid a claim on the vehicle. It does not, I repeat, does not mean that the car is trashed. I mean, it doesn't mean it's damaged. Many cars that are salvaged look perfectly good on the outside and run and drive. It may be that they're already fixed. It may also be they never were really damaged. One of the most common reasons for an insurance claim is a recovered theft. Somebody steals a car, they joyride it, it gets found, discovered later, and now the insurance company owns it. Nothing happened to the car, no damage, but it's an insurance claim. Any type of an insurance claim, like a flood, hail damage, is going to put a record on that car for the rest of its life. That record does not go away. It's permanent. Even if you fix it, even if it's minor. So what that's going to do, two bad things for you. One is, if you ever want to sell that car, the buyer is going to look at it and say, I don't want this insurance car. Poison. Because they don't know what's wrong with it. Number two, you're probably going to have to get it inspected. When you go to title it in your state, they're going to punch the VIN number in. It's going to be a red flag. Start blinking on the screen. Nope, salvage. 
before they issue a title or registration or tags or plates, whatever you call it in your state, they're going to have to inspect the vehicle because if it was an insurance claim, they want to make sure that it's safe for the road, that it was repaired properly or there was no damage. And you might think, well, it looks fine. Everything's great. However, most of what they inspect aren't things that are obvious. They're going to inspect for the source of the parts that fixed it. If you don't have receipts, you're out of luck. We have many clients that bought a perfectly good car, it was fixed properly with all new parts, but they don't have the receipts for the parts, so it won't pass inspection. Out of luck. Another thing could be that there's hidden defects, like it runs and drives good, but the frame is maybe an inch out of square, or maybe the standards on the suspension aren't exactly what their the factory specs are, and they're going to check that out when they inspect it. And if the things aren't in factory specs, reject it. And you might not be able to see that with the naked eye. Another problem with a salvage title is sometimes repairs are done in a way that won't show up or start creating a problem for years down the road. If you have body filler on a vehicle or paint on a vehicle that's not the same quality, two or three years later it starts to fade, chips, crack, and the car is no good at that point or even worse structural damage that starts to shake loose or suspension parts that start to rattle loose another type of historical defect is back taxes back taxes if somebody doesn't pay their tax or registration many states will put a hold on that vin number until that's cleared up even if it's a different owner after the fact they'll put a hold on that title on that vin number Last one, we talked about it briefly, is liens. If there's a lien on the vehicle, bank you know, is owed money, might be on the title, might not be on the title, that's going to hold up you getting a new title with your name on it. Last piece of advice, make sure the VIN number matches. I can't tell you how many times clients call us up and their title problem is that the title they receive from the seller has a different VIN number than what's on the car. And the reason people do that is because if the VIN number that's on the car, the real VIN, has some kind of defect, back taxes, salvage, lien, stolen, God forbid, if you give somebody another title, sometimes they won't even notice that it's for the wrong car until after they get the money, and then they're long gone. They block you on text, they change their number, end of story. So verify all this before you give up your hard-earned cash. doesn't matter how good of a deal it is. Unless you can get a title, all that money is thrown down the drain because the car is nothing more than a lawn ornament until you get a title, registration, and you can drive it. And there's many things that can prevent that from happening, and you don't want to be any part of it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think.